Hey everybody, this is Chris. Today I'm going to show you how to make a chair using nothing but driftwood and hand tools. In this case, it's an Adirondack design. I'm going to go over the inspiration for this project, the design approach, construction and assembly, and all the specific tools that I used. Let's start with the inspiration for this project. I happened to be walking along the river and I looked down and I saw all this driftwood just waiting to be picked up. And then in the next instant, the video was done in my head. So then it was just a matter of doing the woodworking. Now let's talk design approach. My goal was to maintain the beauty, texture, and color of the driftwood. It's so beautiful in its natural state, I didn't want to do any external carving or staining that would ruin it. So I kept it exactly as I found it. I'm starting my chair with this piece. It's a beautiful round symmetric log. It weighs about 40 pounds and this is going to be made into the front legs. It's just beautiful. This is the piece that's going to be the long horizontal section. This has some beautiful color to it and it's thick enough that I can rip this right down the middle and use it for both sides. These are the pieces I want to use for the arms. You can see this piece is just perfect. It even has a shot glass holder already built into it. I don't know if this is long enough, but I hope I can make it work. And this piece, again, has a nice little paw right here, so hopefully these pieces will work out great for the arms. For the seat, I've collected these long, flat pieces, but some of them have some nice curve to it, so I can use that for the front. Uh, others have curve on the flat section for where your butt's going to go, so it should be very comfortable. Oh, but it will weigh 100 pounds, so this chair is intended to be set down and never moved. <laughs> For the back, I'm going to use these long, flat pieces, but what's great is you can see all the amazing texture in this. Just amazing. Again, you got to bring out the natural beauty of the driftwood. Now, as most of you know, I don't have any formal woodworking training. So in terms of the woodworking itself, I kept it very, very simple. I think this might actually work. I'm really tired right now. Time for the shop before this breaks. Ah! All right, so the two posts will be featured in the front. Then this piece will be inset in between the posts. I'm also going to inset the side rails into the same area and cinch it all together with a wedge right here. I'll follow a similar technique back here and above here. Now, I'm not sure yet how to attach the arms to the front or the back, but I'll figure that out. Let's do some chopping.
now you can see the basic structure. I've got my two signature posts in the front, the side rails, and then what I'm going to do right here is peg this and cinch this together. And when I mark this, I'm going to offset this just a little bit so when I pound the peg in, it's going to pull everything tight. This is where the hole is now. And I am going to offset it just a little bit. Like that. And when I pound the peg in, this is going to pull it tight. You can see the advantages of using these big beefy posts because I can bring everything together including the arms and still have plenty of strength. I wanted to be able to easily assemble and disassemble this chair. So I used tapered pegs on the baseboards which allowed me to easily insert and remove them. For the back supports, I initially ripped this beautiful piece of maple, but I got into it in some pretty bad shape, so I had to get some more wood. Now my hamstrings recovered, but I pulled a lot of muscles that day, not just my hamstring. But it is well worth it, because I got some beautiful gnarly pieces, and I incorporated it all into the back with a very simple peg system that holds it all together.
The key point I want to make on the backboard design is that these two boards overlap the other three. So when I peg them, it locks them all in place. Oh. Perfect. Now the one thing I didn't give you was the dimensions, and that's because I didn't start with any. I followed the wood. I should get a t-shirt made that says, follow the wood. Because when you don't use electrical power tools like I do, you gotta take advantage and maximize what the wood has to offer. The grain, the shape, the color, even old looking driftwood can be beautiful. So follow the wood. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved it. So please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter or Instagram so you don't miss out on any of my future projects. Thank you.